This is code.org. Let's see what we're working on. This program is being designed as a simple list library. Write tests to make sure the first function works. Then write the second two functions so that they pass the test. They pass the tests written. Okay. This is done in like grown up coding world um, as test driven development. You write tests and then you meet the, you create programs to meet the test that you wrote to keep you in line. It's part of an agile kind of framework. All right, so uh, let's see. Write test to make the first function works, then, okay, so what's my first function? Fill, length, value, return, list. Okay, so it's gonna return list. Return list is equal to append value. Okay, so it fills it with random values. So let's write a, well, they have some council logs. Let's hit run first. Okay, so we see a lot. All right, so I'm gonna add all the way to the bottom another council log. And I'm gonna say fill and then plus, and let me make sure I get this function. It is just fill length value. Okay, fill length, I'll say five, value, I'll say six. Mm two sure and then a semicolon let me go back to box i think it's sometimes easier to read let me make sure though i have enough space down here all right so here's my test let's run and so yep that worked i just filled it with twos okay now i need to complete these other two functions multiply by list and number okay so i need to be able to multiply every number in the list so what can i do well, I'll do, I'm going to get an equal sign. And this is the list that's being passed. So I'm going to say list. Oops, I already know something I'm missing. A for loop, because I have to go through every item in the Very strange there's no for loop here. I think they're just trying to force us into text. So fine. Multiply by for int i is going to start equal to zero, because the indexes start at zero i is going to be less than what well we don't know the length of the list thankfully we have a way to, to uh get that list dot length so we always want i to be less than the length of the list which is perfect because the last index is the length of the list minus one because we start index at zero i plus plus which is add one to i each time all right let me make sure this is grumpy what do we do oh there's a var. Uh, int is for like C++ and stuff. Var for JavaScript. All right. Now we have a loop. What do we want to do with it? Well, we need to multiply. So I need my list because I'm going to set a new value for every index of the list. What will that new value be? Well, it's going to be the old value of the list. So whatever item I'm at in the list, whatever index, times two. And by times two, I meant to say times number, which is our parameter. I'll go back and fix it. We want to multiply it by the number parameter, by number, not by two. So loop through all the values, make the new value at that index equal to what the old value was, multiplied by two. And then I'm not going to need that because of how this actually worked out. All right, that's looking good. Now we need at least three tests, like it says here. So let's write those tests. Let's go ahead then, and we need three tests. So I'm going to go into text mode and council log. One, two, I'm just copying and pasting. Copy, and then what should my list be? We'll multiply by, and then I need to give it a list. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3. Quacha. And then, yeah, we'll multiply all of that by 2. And actually, I'm just going to use this now, because I can just fill in some numbers. Okay, and now let's say my list will be 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. I want to test four variables there, or four numbers. And what if I multiply all of them by zero? And then this last one, what if I multiply them by negative four? Something like that. All right, let's hit run. And we have a problem. Multiply by. 
Oh, this shouldn't be number. We want to use the parameter, the number passed. Let's do reset. Otherwise, that could only do by two. Why isn't it returning, though? Return list. Oh, return list. Okay, so what they want is us to use this return list. So I'm going to put return list here. And now hit run. Got it. And there we are. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure that is return list. And that needs to be number. Cool. And we got three off of it. Now that's multiply by and we have fill. Finally reverse. Oh, boys. All right. So reverse. How are we going to do that? They want us to use this return list again. So for reverse, remember, you can use a for loop to count up or down. So I'm going to say for var i is equal to, and what am I going to start at? Var i is going to be equal to list dot length minus one, because the length of the list is one more than the index. Since index starts at zero, right, whereas length, it will count how many items. So if it says there's three items in the list, there's three. But if you look at the index, well, there's a zero index, a one index, and a two index for those three items. So we want i to be equal to list length minus one. i needs to be greater than negative one, because we're going to go all the way down to zero for our index. i then minus minus, because we're counting backwards. Now I'm going to do return list. Ooh, and now we got to be careful. So since I'm counting backwards like this, I don't want to put i here because then the index of however long my list is, 10, will be tried to be set first. So I'm going to do a new variable, variable, um, and uh, it can be anything, index is going to be equal to zero right there. Okay. Now here, I'm going to say index is going to be equal to what? Well, it's going to be equal to the list that was passed i and i is going to be towards the end of that list remember and we're counting down but that means we need to manually down here say index plus plus because we need to make sure to count up to fill that list with the reverse of the numbers all right so i'm gonna go down here now and i'm gonna do what i did before i'm gonna just control c or right click and click copy and i'm gonna do paste and I'm going to say reverse is the name of the function, just like they have here. Oh, well, they capitalized. All right. And then I'm going to run the function reverse. And it only takes a list, right? So I don't need this extra thing when I that was left over from when I copied. And that's great. That's my first run through. And I'm going to do it again. Oh, here, I can do what they're doing. One, two. Okay. I'm going to do it again, but this time, I guess, with floats. So 7.1, 3.2, 0.3. And I'm going to just copy this and drop it right here so I know what I did. And then I can do this again, and we'll do it with strings. So M R. Mr. Kaiser, hello world is my list. Fancy. All right, let's give this a shot. Oh, except of course it's strings. I need to make sure to put quotes around all of these. Just a bit shorter so we can see it all. My goodness. All right, let's hit run. And yep, that's reversed. That got reversed and that's reversed. We have done it. Trick E. You can go back to block mode. You won't be able to see my last test, but that's all right. That was a lot of stuff. But this is really cool. Libraries are important and will become more important as we move on. Speaking of, onward!